meeting is now open for the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. Jeremy. I am very grateful to be a member of this church and to be learning the practical instruction of Christian science that helps me each day. There's been a lot on the news lately that is rather upsetting, and I found myself yesterday needing to take extra time to handle it all. So uh, in order to get myself back on track, I started using all the things that I've learned here. I started by affirming that God is mine, God is my mind, and God is the only mind. And then I went to work reclaiming my joy. That part ended up being made easy because I saw the cutest baby yesterday and that really helped. And then I thought of all the times that it's been proven to me the past seven years that God is all and that I'm in the right place here in Plainfield and that he has given me my purpose. And then I thought of the Bible saying that the battle is the Lord's. I don't need to have all the answers. I just need to listen and be obedient each day. After all this, I felt much better. I love that I have this truth to cling to, as well as practitioner support. I think this was a great reminder that I don't ever need to feel like I'm personally responsible for the whole picture. God has given me things to do, and I have him to answer to for my little part. Everything else I can leave to him, and I'm quite grateful to know that truth, life, and love has everything in hand. I'm so grateful for all I'm gaining here in Plainfield. Thank you. And now we have a testimony from Diana in Berlin or Vienna. Hello, this is Diana from Berlin and Vienna. I'm in Vienna now, and I would like to express my gratitude for the roundtable discussion on Sunday, June 21st, particularly in regard to the Christian Science Church's history of discrimination against people with dark skin tones. I am grateful to hear that years ago there were integrated Christian science churches in the South, but it disturbs me to discover that because of the Jim Crow laws in the South, the Southern churches segregated and followed the corrupt state laws instead of proceeding faithfully following God's laws. If the Christian science churches had practiced civil disobedience, and faithfully followed God's laws, I wonder how much more quickly the lie of racism could have been healed in the United States and the world. But now we are here, and I am grateful that we have this moment to fix that history. We have this moment to pray that all the lies and all the fear that is getting revealed in ourselves, our organizations, our schools, our institutions, our governments, our corporations, and our businesses, that all these lies and all this fear is coming out to be healed. I feel that now each of us needs to pray for Africa, as Mary Baker Eddy did, to pray for all people of African descent around the world, all Aboriginal people around the world, and all other groups that have been and continue to be systematically oppressed by a lie including those who have and continue to perpetuate that lie. I feel that we need to pray and watch as if each of us is the last Christian scientist on the earth. And I am so grateful that we have this church so that we can do this together. Thank you. Carol from California. Hi. Good evening. Okay. Today, today I learned about supply. All week I've been telling myself about how God is my supply, not other people or institutions, finding things to read and listen to, not, not a goal that I wrote out for a good life plan, but because God is all and in charge of every event, my supply is already established. So today I called my practitioner as I do every Wednesday, turning the page. 
And I said, well, I still have no income. And she said right away, this is paraphrased, no, stop. Your income is already here. How could it not be for the daughter of the king? She told me about the coins in the fish's mouth from the Bible story in Matthew. After we spoke, I checked my bank account to be sure I was not in the red, and there was unexpected money there. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I am reading from the Martha Wilcox readings. Um, I'm sorry, just one sec. Mrs. Eddy says, Understanding is the reality of all things brought to light. Hence, there is a great need to understand the certain certainty and permanency and the eternality of all that we are conscious of humanly. This understanding is a protection for those of us who seem to have little, as well as for those of us who have much. For it is only as we understand that all things of which we are conscious are divine ideas that we can prove their permanency and their ever-present availability. So thank you for your patience with us new peoples, and um, thank you very much. Bless everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Karen, California. Karen from California. Go ahead, please. Good evening. A quote from miscellaneous writing by Mrs. Eddy says, God is all. And by virtue of this nature and allness, he is cognizant only of good. Like a legislative bill that governs millions of mortals, whom the legislators know not, the universal law of God has no knowledge of evil and enters unconsciously the human heart and governs it, unquote. It was about three years ago that I was standing in our home surrounded by the picture of abundance, nice house, money in the bank, and a wonderful man who loves me and I love him. What more could one ask for? But there was something missing. And as I thought about it for a moment, I realized what it, what it was. Where was God in all this? About 15 years before this, I withdrew my membership in my branch church. I have always been certain of Mrs. Eddy's importance and place as far as the discoverer of Christian science is concerned and could no longer be a part of the church and the direction it was going in with those who did not feel the same. But I had no knowledge of Plainfield Church at the time and sort of took a detour on my journey. As I was listening to a testimony on the church's website this morning by one of the practitioners here, the importance of watching, from a Wednesday testimony meeting of 2015, the previous passage in miscellaneous writings came to me. All the prayers of this church and all other prayers going out into the world is what I must have heard that moment when I wondered what was missing. My thought was receptive, and I heard, where is God in all this? As I kept listening, I threw out <clears throat> all the supplements I'd been taking for a few years, stopped massages, facials, and physical therapy. It wasn't until I was told about Plainfield Church and some months later, decided to call a practitioner from this church, that my life really started to change for the better. She said that it was all well and good to stop, play, to stop relying on these things I knew all along were not to be relied upon. But I had not replaced it with the correct foundation, God and his laws. She told me to know that God has a plan for me, and it is a good plan, a perfect plan, and to trust and rest in that plan. How quickly things began to change for the better. 
my journey to really understand what it means to be a practicing Christian scientist had begun. After blessing, another blessing was becoming a member of this loving church and doing my part to share with others all that I am learning here. I am certain that any receptive thought anywhere in the world is hearing and will hear our prayers and find our light called the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. Again, I quote from miscellaneous writings, Mortals have only to submit to the law of God, come into sympathy with it, and let his will be done. This unbroken motion of the law of divine love gives to every weary and heavy laden rest, unquote. I am so grateful for Christ Jesus, our way shower, and Mary Baker Eddy, the revelator to this age of the Christ truth and all the blessing it, it has done and continues to do for mankind. I am so grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Joanne, Florida. Joanne from Florida. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Fairly, for those beautiful readings. I also want to thank God tonight for a wonderful healing of a relationship with our downstairs neighbor. He's a divorced dad and living alone. And when my husband and I first met him, we did not have much in common with him. For the past several months, though, we've been expressing a lot of love to him, visiting with him outside during the quarantine, often giving him home-cooked meals, and now going to dinner with him weekly. As a result, he's been opening up to us, and about two weeks ago, he told us that he is quitting smoking and hasn't smoked since. This is very significant because he was a very heavy smoker. But the best thing is that a very sweet, considerate friendship has developed between us and could only have happened through Christian science prayer. This is proof of what Mrs. Eddy says in Science and Health, that love is reflected in love. I'm so grateful for this friendship that God has provided and for all the good that Christian science has brought into my life. I'm grateful for all the practitioner help that I have received here and for membership in this church. It's good to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Linda. Thank you very much for the readings tonight and the music. And uh, watching the news lately and seeing some of the upsetness and expressions on people's faces, I was brought to mind a healing that took place when I first came to this, started participating in this church. I'm very grateful for all that I have been witnessing here in the power of prayer. When I started attending this church, I was working in a program that serves special needs children. Because of their uh, behaviors, they were often required a protective environment. I had been uh, doing this work for about 10 years when I started working regularly with the Plainfield practitioner. On my lunch breaks, she would instruct me about how to use God, Christian science in my everyday life and how to think and pray for myself, home, community, nation, world, and my work. At one point, a new student arrived. It changed the atmosphere of the room very quickly, causing a lot of chaos. Often, a look of rage would come over and then followed by a um, harmful action. It was the prayers of my Plainfield practitioner that brought calm and order back to the class. I will never forget the impact of her prayers that had on the student particularly. Within weeks, the expression of rage disappeared. Sometimes even a small expression of happiness would be observed. The child became calmer 
and the harmful actions became less frequent and started to be replaced with learning new skills and obedience. This was a, a very skilled group of behaviorists and hardworking individuals, but I know it was only the prayers and by the grace of God that this change took place in what a diagnosis would say was not possible, especially in a new environment in that short of time. And I look back and I appreciate it more because these prayers healed what many would have saw as an unchangeable condition. And it was the beginning of what I was witnessing, at, uh, what we would say is, what cannot God do? I'm very grateful to be a member of this church. I'm very grateful for this science Mrs. Eddie sacrificed to give us. And I'm very grateful to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Dave from Florida. Go ahead, please. Yeah, hi. Uh, before we moved to Florida some years ago, I had been working for a small company in Hoboken as their salesperson. We were getting help from a practitioner on the whole move and also what I might do for, empl for employment once we got to Florida. One of the things that the practitioner said was that God had a good plan for us and he would be with us every step of the way. Much to my surprise, a few days before we were scheduled to move, I received a phone call from my boss asking if I would be willing to continue working for them remotely on a part-time basis. So I agreed to three days a week, and we settled on a salary. I continued in that job for at least another four years until I decided to fully retire. God really took care of us, and we were very grateful. It's great to know that God always has an answer to all our needs when we turn to him. And Christian science, when practiced the way Mrs. Eddy intended, can heal any situation, including all the troubles that we are seeing in our country and the world today. I'm grateful to be a member here for the Healing Practitioners, and thank you very much for those readings. Thank you. Thank you. Someone in Toronto, Ontario, please identify yourself and go ahead with your testimony. Hello, I'm Pat. I'm just calling. Um, this is. I mean, this this testimony is long overdue. I'm calling to give my testimony. Um, since I've joined, um, not well, since I've been following Plainfield, I did discover this the church by looking for an article I was reading. And the reference in the article is from one of the early readers. And the reference, um, I tried looking for the, uh, the article that, that this particular article was referred to by going on the, um, the internet. And I found your website, on, um, and I've been attending your meetings and working with the practitioner a um, little over two years now. And, um, and there's so much I've learned. I've been in Christian science for so long, and some of the things I've learned since working with the practitioner, I, um, I, I, I would say that I've been speaking with her, and I've been, I, don't, I was trying to avoid not to tell her. I don't think I ever told her how long I've been in Christian science. I've been in the church. I've been hold, held different positions, and the clerk, and that in the church, because I, I was so embarrassed that I didn't know all these things. There's so much I've learned. I remember calling her with a number of issues, and I didn't want—I don't want to go through all of them. And I told her I decided, okay, I'll do this. I'll—I'll I'll pray. I'll work. I'll look for work, and I wouldn't discuss this particular issue. And one of them had to do with um, losing my pension. So we worked on all the other things, but I, I specifically didn't tell her that I lost my pension because of a misunderstanding with the, the company. And I said I'll just work and just let it go. And Within about two weeks, a week, or, or not two weeks, two months or so, all there were so many problems. They were all solved, even the pension. I, I said, I'm not going to call. I'm not going to get involved in this. And um, everything was solved. I had some issues with my family. That also has been solved. I called her about two weeks ago, I think a little over two weeks ago, and it had to do with I would get up in the morning and I feel so tired. Like there's some tiredness, some sort of thing in my body, and I... I I said, I'll try to pray on this. I prayed for about a week, and every morning I get up, it's there. And I said, no, I have to call my practitioner. I called her, and I, she just listened to what I had to say. She stayed silent until I was finished. 
And when I was able, when I got to the point where I said exactly what I was suffering from, she said to me, oh, no, you are God manifesting. No, and she, you know, she, and immediately, whatever it was, and this peace came over me, and I was so, um, I don't know what to say, but I was so elated at this experience. I called her and asked, and I was speaking with her and asking to explain what it is that's happened, because I've been praying with this for one week. I didn't want to call. I said, I, I need to be growing. I've, I'm going here. I'm hearing all these testimonies, and I've been in science so long, and I've learned a lot of things now that I'm here with this church. And, you know, she was able to explain it to me. And I would get up in the morning after that. Every morning I get up and I'm like, I'm expecting this feeling to be there and nothing is there, just a peace. And every time I, whenever I call her, she's so calm. She listens. She never accepts anything. I remember once I was saying to her some issue I had and she listened to me. And then when she was finished, she said very calmly, I'm not impressed. And whatever it was, I, and t today, I, this day, I don't remember what it was, but I started laughing because how she responded as if nothing happened. And, and whatever that was, it had left me. And I, and I don't recall exactly what it was, but I always remember that incident. And I, I'm making some efforts to join the church. I have, I've got my applications together, and I plan, join, I plan joining the church. But um, from that, that two years ago, when I first made contact with her, I prayed when I saw the practitioners. I prayed, and I was left there to call her. I did call her. And um, I've not been, I've not, I've been with the church ever since. I can log on, go to all the church the, um, services. I also am able to um, read the lessons about the, you know, those from the, all, the, all the information. There's so much information on the website. And there's things that I've read on the website and learned that has given me a clear understanding of really what Christian, Christian science, how you pray about it and what Christian science is. I've been in the, in the church that long. What I don't know, I had class instructions, and I was totally lost when I got here. I realized that there is so much things that I've not been taught, and I, I, I didn't understand with the system. And I'm just calling to say thank you for um, the opportunity to be able to log in here every week whenever there's a service with a wonderful website. There's so much information on the website, you know. And um, I'm hoping to, I, I really want, I would be continuing I'm going to be applying for membership to the church very, uh, very shortly, and I want to say thanks for all the good work that that um. Well, thank you thank so you much. So much. <laughs> Shardy. Good evening to all. I wish to express my gratitude for learning about my place. This idea of place I am coming to see covers everything wherever I am, work, home, activity, and church. The article titled Place, attributed to Mrs. Eddy, is a great help, as well as the work of my practitioner. If I stick to only a few of the ideas presented, I begin to make some progress and feel peace. God is the only environment. I do not have to plan. Need is already supplied by divine mind. I am complete, and since all thoughts come from God, I need only to trust Him. Also, every treatment from my practitioner is divine and rests in mind. As I work to love God more and listen, it is becoming clear that since I always manifest God, this realization of my place is internal, which then shows outwardly, wherever I am and whatever I am doing. And from Mrs. Eddy's hymn, Christ my refuge, from tired joy and grief afar, and nearer thee, Father, where thine own children are, I love to be. Thank you. Thank you. Gary. One of the uh, many things that I'm grateful for about the uh, Plainfield Church is learning to appreciate rebukes. <laughs> I know I've talked about this before, but I think it's worth repeating. Uh, Jesus rebuked. He rebuked his disciples. He rebuked the Pharisees. He rebuked the wind. 
Well, before I came to Plainfield, um, I, I, I was just terribly afraid of rebuking anyone or anything. The thought of telling someone that they were doing something wrong or, and uh, possibly hurting their feelings uh, was something that was just very difficult for me to do. And as I look back, I see it was quite cowardly of me as well. Um, but as soon as I joined the Plainfield Church, I met uh, practitioners who were very good at telling me when I was uh, doing or saying something that was not right with God. And at first, I didn't appreciate it, but I learned to appreciate it. And as I look back now, I'm very grateful for those rebukes. And I treasure them more than just about anything else. Um, they showed me when I was being selfish, ungrateful, stubborn, or willful. And they helped me to make some needed changes in my life and put the things of God much higher in importance to me. Uh, I think without them, I would not have been able to make the progress that I did make, the little progress that I did make. <laughs> well, as a result, uh, those rebukes have made me, I'm sure, a happier and a healthier person, and hopefully a person who is more useful to God and to mankind. I've learned that giving a rebuke requires a tremendous amount of love because when you do, you get something back often that is not comfortable. And it requires a tremendous amount of love to be willing to take that. And if I love others, I have to be able to do the same. Mrs. Eddy writes in our textbook, Jesus rebuked sinners pointedly and unflinchingly because he was their friend. He loved them. He loved them enough to rebuke them. And can I do anything less? Well, I'm grateful to the practitioners that I've worked with in this church. I'm grateful to them for being such a good friend. And I thank God for Christian science as lived and taught in this church. And thank you very much for the readings tonight. Thank you. This is Carol. When I got up Saturday morning and looked out the window, the sky was yellow. That's never a good sign. <clears throat> I checked the weather report and it showed a line of severe storms with heavy winds headed for Plainfield. And they said to expect power outages. <clears throat> We all started working and praying to protect the service the next morning, which was Sunday, and the broadcast, and also the travel of some people who were coming from out of state. I worked with the thought that God holds the wind in his fists, and something I especially love from Watches, Prayers, and Arguments that Mrs. Eddy told her students. She said she looked at some storm clouds and said, the face of God is there, and I can see it. And the storm clouds dissolved away. <clears throat> there was a little rain later in the day, but no bad storms. There were some trees blown down in other areas, but Plainfield was fine, and the service went on with no problems. I'm so grateful that God does hear our prayers and for his protection, and very grateful for the readings today. Thank you. Florence from Georgia, go ahead, please. Thank you. Thank you, Freli, for the readings tonight. I have two testimonies uh, to read from. One from Catalan, it's a new person that discovered us not too long ago. She says, I was just listening to the June 7th roundtable and last week's one. What a blessing. I only want to thank you all for what you are doing and for reminding me, reminding to us that to go to the Holy of Holies, as Esther did, systematically, 
is the way to bring heaven on earth, or to put in other words, to open wide our spiritual vision that we can see the chariots of fire that surround us all. God's spiritual reality, here and now. I've prayed a lot to find my people. Today, I felt all of you are my people, and I'm very grateful. And embrace you all in a deep prayer of thanksgiving. God bless you all. The second one is from Germany. And she says that last year in January, my son had to make his first presentation about an European country at school. The pupils <clears throat> were to choose the country they would like to talk about before the Christmas holidays and prepare the 8 to 10 minute presentation for the end of January. During the holidays, I asked my son about the presentation and offered to help him, but he did not accept any help. A few days before the presentation was due, he started to work. There seemed to be lots of confusion and nervousness the day before. Instead of getting angry at him for waiting till the last minute to do any work, I calmed myself and read about MIND from Normal Class Notes 1937 by Bicknell Young. Part of it said, Mind's demonstration of intelligence has never been reversed, interrupted, or impeded. Man's oneness with the intelligence and divine faculties of mind is forever demonstrated. A divine idea carries within itself the power to accomplish the divine purpose and the responsibility of its unfoldment belongs to divine principle who cares for each detail of its progressive being. I stayed and prayed with this. Then I remembered that principle gives the right order for sequence. Soul holds everything in harmony, the beauty of the speech, the harmony of all people who are involved and then I declared that everyone who has a presentation, an interview, or speech expresses all these divine attributes and skills, and that nothing can be forgotten or lost in mind. When he came home, I wanted to ask how it was, but he went into his room, and I had the thought to be quiet. In the evening, after we had prayed and when both of us already were in bed, he suddenly rushed into my room, hugged me, and said that during the presentation, he felt that I was praying. There is a big clock in the classroom, and in the seventh minute, he stopped and it seemed that he did not know how to continue. He said he got quiet and prayed silently. A few classmates had begun to laugh, but he didn't care. Then he heard a voice in his head telling him all the missing points, and he was able to finish within 10 minutes. After the presentation, the teacher and the classmates asked questions about the country and its characteristics, and there was a boy who had lived close to that country and knew a lot about it all. My son was able to answer a question about some attraction there, and he, that's something he did not know before and hadn't even studied. I am very grateful for this inspiration from Bicknell Young and Mrs. Eddy's work. I am grateful for all that I'm learning. I'm really grateful for these testimonies coming in because it just proves to me that God is blessing with what he is doing here, the whole world. Different people are finding Christian science independent, and it's making so much difference the world over. I'm so deeply moved by when they say that those, even those who have been in Christian science for years, and yet they find that 
there's something here so special that God is doing, making everybody understand this truth that he gave the world through Mrs. Mrs. Eddy so that the world may have salvation, the harmony that is intended for everyone. I'm so grateful to be here tonight for all the other testimonies. And it's just wonderful to wake up every day to know that there are people of like mind working together for the glory of God. Happy to be here tonight. Thank you. And Mary. <laughs> so our Wednesday service now seems to officially go on until 9.30, and we're very grateful <laughs> that we have so many testimonies from so many people. This is from our church website bulletin board, California. Thank you, God, for all the work and product from the Plainfield Christian Science Church. Around me in my neighborhood, people seem confused, angry, afraid. My focus to the church gives me the structure I need. My own work to see spiritually keeps me well. Thank you, God, for the plain truth via my church, that you are the one source and only power. Thank you all for every breath you use to keep this church in the moment now. And then from Florida. Thank you for reprinting the pamphlet by John Morgan, Some Notes on True Vision. I keep it in a basket above, of uplift, uplifting Christian science material available at your bookstore. This morning I was feeling rather dismayed about the, quote, masking of society. My hand was guided to page 11 on love, where I found the remedy for peace. Quote, the light of ever-present love illumines the universe. End quote. I see that every idea is at rest, never frustrated or thwarted, never tense, and so my vision rests in action and is at peace and satisfied. Love's viewpoint confers impartiality, forgiveness, constancy, as Shakespeare has it. Love is not love which alters when, it's, when it alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempest and is never shaken. I look with the eye of spiritual in innocency and behold not evil, for we are in the divine presence. I behold man in love and blot out all sense of imperfection, all fear and dislike. I look with the eye of love's benevolence and behold in man the hues and qualities of God. Mrs. Eddy's words go on to say, I saw the love of God encircling the universe and man filling all space, and that divine love so permeated my own consciousness that I loved with Christ-like compassion everything I saw. This realization of divine love called into expression the beauty of holiness, the perfection of being, which healed and regenerated and saved all who, who turned to me for help. That was from the Blue Book. Thank you again, Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, for making the truth so readily available on your powerful website. And this is a um, testimony from California. I would like to express gratitude to our Father, Mother, God, for directing me to the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, for the loving guidance of the Plainfield practitioners, the uplifting sharing of its members, and the new life which has been breathed into what I call Christian science practice since being led to this church. There are so many inspirations and unfoldments I could write about and will, but tonight I want to thank my Plainfield practitioner who has been working with me to learn more about God and his creation, which includes me, the image and likeness of God. Recently, last Friday, I awoke in the morning to find physical signs and symptoms of something I was familiar with and definitely didn't want. 
what the medical profession calls a bladder infection. Upon calling my practitioner, I mentioned this and asked for her support as I knew the symptoms would be causing more discomfort in a little time and would have to be addressed. She shared with me the statement from Science and Health, quote, health is not a condition of matter, but of mind, end quote, and lovingly reminded me of something that had unfolded to me earlier. Health has always been mine as God's reflection. Therefore, how could I ever lose it? This was an opportunity to demonstrate this. She affirmed the truth about me and suggested that I read an article called Infection, What It Is and How It Operates by Herbert Eustis. In this article, Mr. Eustis translates the thought of infection based on, on material sense of life into infection as a spiritual expression of life. He states, Infection is mind imparting itself to its idea, imparting its very name and nature, infecting its own expression with life, purity, and perfection. Where morbid infection claims to be, there is the very presence of mind imparting the infection of spirituality, the beauty of holiness. Working with all of these ideas, reading my lesson, praying on the weekly watch, and knowing that my practitioner was providing needed support, I went on to some research I was doing and soon realized that the symptoms were no longer there. The weekend passed and all was well until Sunday night when the false claim arose mildly and briefly once again. In speaking with my practitioner once again, she reminded me to recognize the false claim. I know who you are, animal magnetism, trying to distract me from doing my work for God. And this could only have ever been an illusion. It could not have any power. Healing took place, and this is the first time in my life that I have not had to get medical assistance with this issue. I am so very grateful to be in this church, so grateful for the support of my practitioner, so grateful for all of the spiritual food always present on that table before me, and what a special article that was on translations by Martha Wilcox, which continues to bless me. And then England. I'd just like to say thank you for the excellent roundtable session on Sunday, which I have listened to twice so far. far. I am surprised that Mr. Kimball's writings were not accepted by some people, given that Mrs. Eddy thought so highly of him and had asked him to teach the normal class of December 1910. I am very grateful for all these helpful sessions each week. Thank you, and much love to you all. And then this one, I'm not sure what state she is. I really want to say thank you to all that you are doing. I do not even know how I landed on the Plainfield Christian Science page website, and for a while I ignored it until recently. Although a lot needs to be uncovered, I feel like I am waking up from a long nightmare. The quote unauthorized unquote material is helping me so much and answering so many questions and opening up a world I was not aware of. I have also found the round tables especially enlightening and I feel like you are all my friends as you discuss openly the errors that need to be uncovered and not brushed under the rug, as they are in most of the churches. I am still working through a lot of resistance in my mind to accepting dear Mrs. Eddy and the idea of church. My childhood in Christian science was enshrouded in fear and mystery in Christian science, and I saw Mary Baker Eddy as a spooky old lady. The articles on your website are helping me to work through this. I especially enjoyed the discussions about Mary Baker Eddy as the woman in the apocalypse, as I have resisted this because my Christian science teacher was against it. Due to never having had a Christian science healing and having all my family members leave Christian science due to its failure to quote, heal my mother and their own hatred of the religion, it is most difficult for me to allow science back into my life 
but something is pushing me to keep reading so that I will do. No matter how I tried, I could never belong to a branch church and also feel the urge to withdraw from the mother church. When I worked there in the 90s, my life was in turmoil and I felt like I was walking through sludge. I love the point that I heard yesterday. Science is to gain wings, not a medicine cabinet. I wanted to say I am grateful and that the message you are all sending out is reaching people, and I feel its sincerity. I am too so grateful for these beautiful letters we're getting. So many people, there are many more that I, I get, and I know Florence does too, of expressing such gratitude, finding this church. I mean, one man, he says he turns on our YouTube and listens to it during the, the night hours. I know there are many that do that when they can't sleep. It is the healing truth going out to bless and heal the world. I am very grateful for this service tonight, the fact we do have so many testimonies, the beautiful readings. Um, I love the ending tonight.